we are going to continue our teaching series, No Place Like Home, where we're looking at a particular story that Jesus told while he was alive. And though it's a story that most of us have heard, it's very easy to miss just how brilliant it is. And Jerry's gonna be talking about that right now. All right, so last week we uh, started a new series called There's No Place Like Home, and we started off with a story that most of you are familiar with. As, as Jess said, it's one that we have heard so much that sometimes it's, it's easy to miss the brilliance of it. And so we're taking two or three weeks uh, here to get into this and then and in some application. Uh, the point of the whole uh, story that Jesus told, or the three stories that Jesus told about a lost sheep and a lost coin, and a lost son was he wanted everyone to know how much God loves sinners. Uh, there were people in the crowd that were uh, very self-righteous, very proud. And there were people in the crowd who thought, I've done so much, God could never love me. And he wanted both of those, peop both of those crowds of people to know how much God, uh, God cared uh, for them. And so uh, just it, we, we ended by saying um, that we... we want to pray every week and every day, and I hope you've made this part of your prayer habit every day, the simple prayer of God, help me to see people today the way that you do. Help me to see people the way that you do. God, help us as a church to see people uh, the, the, the way that you do. So, so just 30 second review. Um, he told a story about the lost sheep and the lost coin, but then he got to a man, there was a man who had two sons, and you know the story, you could tell it, the younger son went to his father one day and said, give me everything that uh, is due to me in the inheritance, I, I want out, I don't want you, I don't want rules, I don't want boundaries, uh, just give me what's mine, and uh, we know, you know, the people in the crowd just hated that, but the kid, the dad, for some reason did that, and, uh, and we left off last week, and it said that, uh, that the young man had squandered uh, all of his wealth in wild living. He squandered it. Uh, we looked at that word, so that's an interesting word. You probably never see it any other place. Uh, but he squandered it means he scattered it. He, he basically threw it away, all right? And, and we, kind of, we, we kind of left off there. And, and, and the question we ask at the very end, so I'll, I'll make that the beginning uh, this week, is we said, so who are you in the parable? Okay, are you the younger brother? Are you the older brother? Are you the father? And we're going to sit on that for a while today. I shared a little bit of my testimony um, last week about that. So today is for you guys that are here on our campus, you that are watching. Um, have a little, we ask you to be very honest with yourself. You're not going to have to, you know, embarrass yourself or raise your hand or say, this is me. But to be very honest with yourself as you look at this question. Who are you in the parable? Uh, you, you may have said, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a younger brother. I'm in a season of life where, um, you, you know, I, I don't like who I see in the mirror. Uh, I don't like that I'm here at this place in my life, this situation that I've got myself into. I never intended to get myself into this situation that was this is not the life that I wanted to live. Um, and now, it, you know, this is not the habit that I wanted to control my life. It was something that started as a one-time thing. Now it's a, it became a pastime, and now it's become habitual. And it's something that's destroying my life, and I don't like where I'm headed. It's not what I dreamed of. And like the younger son, you feel like you're in a distant country. And, and here's what Jesus said happened to this younger son when he realized all of this. And I love the wording of it. And it says, and he came to his senses. He came to his senses. I always, I grew up watching cartoons, <laughs> as you can tell with my weird sense of humor. But remember when a guy'd get a great idea, that little light bulb would come on over his head? And I can just picture that, you know, this little light bulb appearing over this guy's head and it gets turned on. Oh, you know, but he came to his senses. We would say today he woke up. He acknowledged what everybody else could see. And let me tell you something today. If you consider yourself young, the younger son maybe right now and you're not, up, you're not doing some of the things that, that, that you know, everybody already knows. Everybody already knows. The, the people who love you the most can see what's going on in your life, even if you think they don't. And, and when you come to your senses and you acknowledge it, nobody who loves you and who cares about you is going to say, well, I didn't know that. 
No, they're going to say, yeah, I've been praying for you. And I, I'm glad to see you coming back home. And I'm glad you're back. So this younger son says, what am I doing here? I don't need to be here. He abandons his pride. He starts heading home. You can read the whole story yourself it's in Luke 15. And, 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 and th there may be someone here today or someone watching who would say, yeah, I'm the younger son. I'm tired of this. I need to go home. Uh, I don't care who knows it. I'm just ready to get back to the place with God that I need to be. And there might be some of you who would say, and, and I've been um, all over this, but honestly, right now, I kind of relate to the Father. I, I think I've kind of crushed all that judgmental stuff out of me, Jerry, and I kind of feel like I'm in the place where I've begun to see people the way my Heavenly Father sees me like I should, and, and I'm not what I used to be, and I'm, I'm like the Father in the story. And this is a hard one. And if you're being completely honest today, it's hard to admit, but maybe because you've gone through some things and kind of come out on the other side, um, you kind of lean towards the, hey, I've done right, or I'm doing right thing. I'm the rule follower. But it's easy for me to slip into that mode of being a judge and holding the gavel and pronouncing sentence. And maybe you feel a bit morally superior to other people. And if you're not sure if that's you or not, because this can be hard to see, maybe going back to the parable will help. Because in the parable, the younger brother begins to make his way home. We don't know how far it was. The father's out on the corner of the property, looking down the road for him day after day after day. And in the parable, Jesus says this. He says, but while the younger son was still a long way off, his father saw him. So if you think you belong in the role of the father or whether you do or not, I want you to put yourself there for a few moments. And here's a question I want to ask you. If you see yourself in the role of the father and you see your rebellious son coming back, how would you be inclined to fill in this blank in the verse? It said, but while the younger son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with blank. Okay, this kid who said, you're dead to me, dad, this kid who said, I, I don't appreciate anything you've done. In fact, give me what's mine. I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. And this kid's coming back now. And you've heard of what's been going on in his life. And you've heard how he's scattered all of that wealth and how he's wasted it and how he's thrown it away. How do you fill in that blank? Okay, his father saw him and was filled with, and I wrote some down, resentment, uh, anger, how about suspicion? I mean, we, we could name others and we could continue the conversations like, oh, sure, you're coming home now. You've run out of friends. You've run out of money. Uh, oh, sure, you're repenting. Oh, sure, you're coming back to church now. Oh, yeah, you want to get your life straightened out now. You're not sorry. You're just sorry everything's falling apart. And that's, that, that's the thing that, that we could answer that with. And in all of the parables, as I said last week, there's a character who represents God. And of course, in this parable, the God character is the father. And the father's true response is the point of the parable. Remember, we said Jesus wants these people to know how he views sinners and how his father views sinners. And this is how God views that person and views the wicked that prosper. And this is how God sees them. He sees them as lost. He sees them as separated. And, and he sees them as having wandered away from home. And I wrote this down, and th this is good. Maybe just kind of hang on to this. It'd be easy to in your mind. God's agenda on a sinner coming home is never payback. Sometimes for us it is, isn't it? Well, let, let's just see how they do. Let's just hold off. Let's just, you know. God's agenda is not payback. That's my agenda. God's agenda is not payback. God's agenda is comeback. God's agenda is win back. God's agenda is let's just get them home and restore them. So in the parable where the father represents God, this is the word that Jesus puts in that blank in the heart of the father. And the word that I want to have in my heart all the time. And if you're serious about following, being a follower of Jesus, you've got to get this word there. But while the younger son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. Compassion, not anger, not suspicion, not disgust, compassion. And, 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 and we are, and we're listening to this story, and again, we've heard it, and, but this group is hearing it for the first time, and, and there may be like, wait a minute, Dad, are, are you paying attention to what your son has done? 
The whole community thinks you're a laughing stock. You let your, your son did this, you let him go, you're willing to do all the, of what you did in order to get him back. And the father would say, yeah, yeah, that's why I did all of that. You see, that's the heart of our heavenly father towards sinners. And by the way, just quick review, last week we determined every single one of us are sinners. <laughs> this is the heart of God towards us. And for years in my life, I filled in that blank. When the kid came home, the father saw him and was filled it. For years in my life, as I shared with you last week, I filled in that blank way different. All right? I was always suspicious and angry and how come they get and I don't and all this. And that means that as good as an obedient, as moral as I was, I was nothing like my heavenly father. I was nothing like my savior. Do you remember what happened next in the story? Kind of go through it here. See, when I was growing up and I heard this parable taught, I heard the part where the father runs to the son and he throws his arms around him and he embraces him. And, but, but again, I've heard the story. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law and the, the tax collectors and the sinners were hearing this for the first time. And everybody in this crowd of these people and the women who were there, everyone's kind of like cringing. <laughs> what do you mean? Why would the Father do this? And, and, and I, Jesus is such a great storyteller. I think he sees their reaction. He just kind of pours it on. Not only did the Father run to his son and hug him, but he says the Father kissed him. Okay, this kid who smells like the pigs that he's been feeding. And they're thinking, what is wrong with this father? What is wrong with this father? And, and Jesus wants them to know there's nothing wrong with this father. This is God's response to sinners who choose to come home. And, and do you remember that now the, the younger son had kind of prepared a speech, remember? He said, Dad, I'm, uh, you know, I've done this, I've done this, I'm awful, I'm no longer to be your, worthy to be your son. Just hire me. Make me as one of your servants. At least they have food. At least they have a place to sleep at night. And, and, and so he wants to start on this speech, and, and so he's you know, kind of rehearsing, and his father's hugging him and kissing him and all this stuff, and make me like one of your servants. But the dad would have none of that. All right? He said, bring the best shoes. He didn't say bring shoes. He said, bring the best shoes. He didn't say bring some clothes. He said, bring the best robe. Bring my ring. I'm restoring him to his former status. But something else is going on. The father's throwing a party. And meanwhile, the older brother's throwing a gasket. <laughs> He's throwing a fit. All right. You remember that part? The older brother, Jesus said, became angry and refused to go in. The one who stayed home. So the father went out to him and he pleaded with him. Get this, he went out to get his prodigal son, and he also had to go out to get his older son. All right? So the father initiates all of this, and maybe he pleads with his older son to come in and join the party. And maybe God, who loves you and I, maybe God is pleading with us today to take the judgmental log out of our eye and see like he sees. I think God would challenge every one of us to see sinners the way that He sees them. He says, I know that they're sinners, but so are you. I mean, we, we kind of settled that last week. But He says, I want you to see sinners in the same way that I see sinners. And He pleads with us. He pleads with us. And the older son begins to remind his dad then, after all, he begins to remind his dad of all the good things he's done. Well, wait a minute. Why should I forgive him? Why should I accept him? After all... I've never wandered off. I've never taken your money. I've never backtalked. I've done everything that you have asked me to do. I've been obedient. And the dad's probably just sitting there the whole time nodding along saying, I know, I know, I know. And then he looks at the older brother and he says, but son, you were never lost to me. You were never lost to me. But someone that I love was lost. And so, and Jesus concludes the story by saying, we had to celebrate. We had to celebrate and be glad. Because this brother of yours was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and is found. And so for those of you today who are Christians, whether you're here on our church campus or whether you're watching online, um, you're a Christian, and I would say that's probably most of us, maybe all of us today. For those of you who are serious about following, being a follower of Jesus, here is the point of the parable. Here is the thing, all right? We all know 
or excuse me, we will know that we are in sync with our Heavenly Father. We will know that we are walking in the Spirit. We will know that we are filled with the Spirit of God and living in the direction of a Heavenly Father when we feel the same way that the Father felt towards those who are lost. If I say I'm a follower of Jesus, then I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to be an apprentice. I'm going to be a learner. I'm going to be a disciple. And let me just say this. If we do not, if you do not have compassion on those who are lost, then we have some work to do. And you have some work to do. And maybe I have some work to do. Because if sin and separation breaks the heart of the Father, as this story tells us, it should break my heart. As a follower of Jesus, when I see someone out in sin, shouldn't make me angry at them, shouldn't make me disgusted with them. It should elude or, or have compassion come out of it. It should break our heart and break your heart as well. And then I was wondering this, and I came up with this, and I hope this is good for you. Do you know why sin breaks the heart of your Heavenly Father? Because sin breaks people. And sin breaks the people that God loves. Sin breaks people. And sin breaks the people who God loves. So again, where are you in the story? Younger brother, older brother, father. Let me ask you this, where should you be in the story? Where should you be in the story? Well, why not just go there? What's keeping you from it? What, what, what's holding you back? I mean, all of the younger brothers